You are listening to the Workbench After Hours podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to the Second Amendment, where we talk about firearms, everything going on in the gun community, and we even try a different whiskey every week. In this week's episode number 75, we're going to talk all about whiskey hunting, from the pros, the cons, tips and tricks, how to do it, and why you even have to hunt for those allocated up bottles. And I recently found Eagle Rare, which I've been searching for for a couple years now while I was visiting the West Coast, and that is going to be the Whiskey of the Week. Welcome back to episode number 75. We finally hit that three-quarter century mark. Ooh. We're getting every episode closer to opening up that Sinatra Jack. Oh, yum. That sweet nectar. <laughs> yep. Episode 100, that's coming on, so we're getting there. So, Chris, we've talked about a bottle of whiskey that we've been trying to find for quite some time. We've seen it, but have been unable to purchase it. Yep. And I went out to the West Coast wine country. First place I went into, they had a bunch of bottles on the shelf. Double the MSRP, but they still had it (laughs) and no limit. So what did I grab, Chris? I'm guessing it's Eagle Rare. This bottle right here, this beauty. Yes, finally got my hands on it. So I bought four. (laughs) (laughs) Alan wanted one, so I bought one for him and bought uh, some extras. So... Yeah. Yeah. And if, if we had it driven, I would have bought more and some other stuff too <laughs> that we found that we'll talk about. But we were flu. So we had to carefully roll up two bottles of my suitcase, two bottles of my wife's suitcase, and hope to God TSA didn't break them. Yeah, that would suck. Oh, I'd be pissed. <laughs> uh, you now owe me a hundred. <laughs> yes. $200. Mm-hmm. So we I've actually had this before in a restaurant and it's good. And I've never had it. I've been waiting. The wait is up. <laughs> so we want to pour those into the Glencairn glasses, and we'll give it a shot. So if you don't know, this is from Buffalo Trace Distillery. They actually have a crap ton of different types of whiskey that they distill. Some of them, it's like, man, I didn't even realize that uh, Buffalo Trace had anything to do with it. Oh, they got a lot. Including... I know just a re- regular Buffalo Trace, which we've had on here and is really good. Yep. One of my favorites. But then you got the Eagle Rare. And there's more than one Eagle Rare, apparently. They huh. have the Double Eagle Very Rare. <laughs> so that's why you never see it, because it's a very rare. And then the Eagle Rare 17-year-old. Ooh. Good luck finding those. I've never I'm seen I'm sure. Them. But this Eagle Rare is masterfully crafted and carefully aged for no less than 10 years. So... Ooh. Complex nose with aromas of toffee, hints of orange peel, herbs, honey, leather, and oak. Hmm. Toff- I'm getting like that, that toffee slash little... caramel. Yeah. It smells like a candy. Yes. Definitely getting some oak. Yeah. Kind of breathe in too much there and got the <laughs> burn on the nose. Yeah, that little proof. Yep. So this is, yo, it says right on the bottle, age 10 years. Mm. Yeah, I'm not getting the herbs or the orange or leather. I don't really get a leather (laughs) smell. I can't, you know, I don't really taste leather that much. Yeah. There you go. But on the taste, you're going to get a bold, dry, and delicate with notes of candied almonds and very rich cocoa with a dry and lingering finish. Hmm. doesn't help that i brushed my teeth not too long ago (laughs) (laughs) wow it's it's, there's a sweetness to it a little bit it's not like overpowering Ooh, it's good though let me tell you wow this neat just by itself Mm. good you got your your spice but it's not like overpowering spice you would think for it being aged 10 years it's just like subtle Mm -hmm. and the color of it is Definitely darker than the regular Buffalo Trace for sure. Yeah. Again, that could have something to do with the aging process. I think Buffalo Trace was much younger than this 10-year Eagle Rare. Yeah. Man. Man, it is good. Wow. Yes. A lot of restaurants do carry Eagle Rare on the menu. You're going to pay for it. Yeah. But it's something to try. If you're looking, if you can't find it like we did, but you want to try it, I yeah. recommend going I was to just a like, restaurant. Oh, I'm just going to find it. I'm going to find it. I can find it before I try it. No, Ooh. it was, it's 
It was a crazy experience. Oh, I bet. Some of those pictures you were sending, I'm just like, <laughs> Yeah. So I've gone, I've traveled from Florida, driven all the way through Georgia, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and Kansas, obviously, looking for a bottle of Eagle Rare and like some other stuff, obviously, but never found a bottle that I could purchase. Some liquor stores, especially ones close to us, have them, <laughs> have them, but they're doing it by raffle. Or if you spend the most money within some time frame, you get the option to purchase it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can walk in and find it on the shelf at all. But I, we were, we went to LA and we flew in LAX and we place we were going, I think it was like Beaumont, California, which is hour and a half, two hours east of LA. Okay. First liquor store, we went to In-N-Out, which is, oh, fight me on this, but it is the most delicious fast that is, food burger place. That is one of my favorites. Yes. We like, went twice. <laughs> I love In-N-Out. Wife or cat does not care for it. Did you get it with animal style? I don't like pickles, so I did not. Oh, man. My wife did. Oh, I love animal style. I just got a regular, I hate pickles. I, that's one thing I miss about California is In-N-Out, junkyards. <laughs> If I would have known about whiskey, I probably would have missed that since it seems like they got everything. And my guess is because it's wine country. Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't know. But the first liquor store, we're like, oh, well, we got to go because we drink a lot because we're Italian <laughs> Catholic. So, you know, you drink a lot going there for a wedding family that you don't see very often. So, yeah, we, we were going to drink. So we're like, let's go to the liquor store, walk into the first one, very small place. And we were making fun of all the Teslas sitting outside charging. <laughs> and you just got people standing there, sitting in the car, standing there on their phones. It's like, you guys are a bunch of idiots. <laughs> so we were making fun of them. But walk in, and some of it's different. A lot of liquor stores there, probably because of crime, have a lot of the stuff behind the counter yeah. as far as liquor goes. So I'm, I was looking, and I saw it. I'm like, wow, there it is. <laughs> right before my eyes. And I'm like, this must be a a joke or something, but they had a bunch of different bottles. I think they had at least six and I looked at the price 79 99. Damn it. <laughs> about double MSRP, but it was available right there. Yeah. So about two hmm. and a couple days later, we went back to another liquor store. They had a hell of a lot more same price, bought two more <laughs> <laughs> and they had other stuff. They had the, red wellers they had the black wellers and i've also seen the blue up there oh wow crazy money i oh, think I'm for sure. the red one they wanted 500 bucks what i saw an limited edition jack daniels the eric church one yeah which i knew nothing about that was like 350. yeah and i've been seeing that one just online of course like 150 to 250 maybe mm -hmm. but it uh, yeah but the Red Weather, didn't we ask uh, one of the local local stores, like, well, what's the usual price for that? And it was like 65 bucks. Yes. Yes. Holy smokes. But what we're going to talk about is because it's so rare and hard to get, they're going to charge whatever they want to yeah. charge and make that money because they yeah, know somebody kinda, will pay that. That's fucking bullshit. Especially in California. Yeah. I, and I don't know if it. I was able to find a lot of this stuff that we can't hear in California because, you know, wine country. Yeah. Or what? But it was so weird. Or maybe that's where, like... Their allocation, like all the big wigs are right there. So they just, well, I'll just get them all they want. Maybe. That's bullshit. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was good to see that stuff. Uh, they had Blanton's. A couple different places had Blanton's. Way more than well, we I would want to pay. MSRP, <laughs> 65, 70. Yeah. One place had a bunch of them on the shelf and the guy was wanting 150. I'm like, Oof. you're crazy. Get bent. Yeah. Went to LAX and they have a, place where you can buy duty-free liquor yep and i walked in i'm like oh my god they had i don't know bottles and bottles and bottles of blantons yeah i saw you sent that picture and i was just like holy like, that's what the this most is this I've is where seen. all the blantons is yeah 110 dollars. yeah lady was there looking at it didn't know much she was looking at it, getting somebody a gift and i told him like you know msrp is about 70 she ended up buying it because yeah. it was a gift and i'm like yeah it's if you see it and you know what it is <laughs> can't get it might as well get it I found a couple more taster series Jack Daniels. Um, I have one that's like the pecan yeah. and something. I found a couple others. Went to go buy them, and for some reason, 
You can only buy the liquor in the airport if you're flying international. Like, Damn. son of a bitch. Do they consider Hawaii international? <laughs> <laughs> no. Damn. I don't think so. What about Mexico? Maybe. Technically. Maybe. Just fly down to Mexico and fly back <laughs> to Kansas City. <laughs> but then you got to go through customs. Yeah, fuck that. And that happened to my wife and I. We were we went through security and everything in Mexico. We're waiting. I'm like, oh, let's buy some tequila here in the airport because we've already gone through security. So we bought some nice tequila, you know, carried it on. And then, of course, we didn't realize once you get back into the States, you got to go through security again here in the States. Yeah. And that's when they're like, oh, that's beyond our liquid limit that you can carry on. So... We gave up four bottles of tequila that was oh. had the actual agave in it, and I was pissed. Yeah. We already had, like, four in our suitcases, but still. Yeah. We paid for that and had to give it up, plus some hot sauce. Damn. Like, it was in the airport after we went through security. This yeah. is ridiculous. So, I don't know if you'd run in that situation. I don't know if what happens to her if she gets there and has another flight somewhere. Yeah. If she has to give it up, or if it's just the U.S. and their crazy Bullshit. TSA. But... That's with, bullshit. With all that, I was, I was, I told my room, like, I'm thinking about it. I know that's way overpriced, but I want another bottle. Yeah. But I wasn't, I mean, really. Couldn't buy it anyway. Yeah, because we've seen it too for like 250 <laughs> So we've seen where it can get up to. Yes. So it, it's crazy. Yeah. But this, this Eagle Rare, just neat, is so good. Yeah. I'm like, it's, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this, to be honest with you. I was like, it's probably just going to be all right. But I'm like, dang it. <laughs> so you're going to buy that? Other uh, bottle for me? Uh, I might. <laughs> <laughs> if not, stay in here. So either way, yeah. I'll get drank eventually. But I got to have one for the shelf. Yeah. I think it's downstairs, actually. But Yeah, I was th- sitting there thinking about that on the way here. I was like, man, I should have ran to the liquor store and see if they just had been to have it. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> That'd be my luck. <laughs> that would happen, and yeah. they would have it for $40. Yep. Like, oh, my God. But... I'll just buy two of those. <laughs> same thing when we were in... Um, oh, I also found a bunch of Sinatra Jack Selects, like boxes and boxes up on this top shelf. I'm like, oh my God, that's the most I've ever seen in one place. How much do you want for them? Because there was no price. And he said 200 which is $40 higher than, you know, about normal MSRP. Yeah. But we paid $200 yeah, we did. for ours that we found. Because that was the first time we've ever seen it. And... Yeah, we kind of jumped the trigger on that one because we never, we've never seen it. Yeah. So we paid $200 thinking we would never see it again. Well, then we the next liquor store we went to, they had it for one sixty. Yeah, and they had like six of them. Yeah, we're like, what the? F-? But Alan bought one, and we were able to open it up for the podcast and try his. Yeah. So, and then I found one randomly yeah. here in Kansas City for one sixty. Yep. Oh man, I got lucky. About. I mean, I th- I think two hundred is probably a fair price for that. Yeah. I mean, once you start getting above that, I'm like, hmm, no, because it is good. We it had is it really, really good. good. Yeah, and it's a larger bottle. It's a liter, yeah. Actually, let me, let me pull it up here. So this is what we are going to try, episode 100, which I forget the date. I think it's sometime in November. <laughs> but comes in this nice, fancy box. Open it up. Hope I don't drop it. Got a little card in there, booklet, talking about the history of yep. Sinatra Select and Jack Daniels. So it's, it's a nice presentation for what yes. it comes in, too, and the bottle and just the taste of it. So good. I think this is a, yeah, it's a one liter bottle. Yep. And it's just, just nice. Yeah. And you can, you know, display it like this. I keep mine shut. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> keep the light out, but I keep mine shut and it's in the cabinet. And I'm like, you know what? I would buy another one for 200 bucks, but I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get that home. Yeah. I don't have any room in the suitcase after, you know, the four bottles of Eagle Rares. It's that almost we had. like going to like the post office and get like one of those flat rate boxes. Yeah. And, and start I stacking them. Looked into that. You would have to, because states are funky about shipping booze. Yeah. You'd have to package it without UPS knowing what's in it. Yeah. So that would be kind of hard, especially from being out of state. Like, so you'd have to go in, find a box, then maybe go back out to your car, pack it and buy yeah. all this stuff. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm like, I already have to... I'm, yeah. As much as I would love to bring one back, surprise you with another one. <laughs> uh, it's just too bulky yeah, it is. when you're limited. It's all right. I think here at the end of July time frame, I might be doing a little road trip down to Atlanta. So I'll be stopping in Kentucky. <laughs> but do get Kentucky. Tennessee, all of it. Nice. So hopefully you'll find something. Hopefully. Bring something back. Jack Daniel single malt? I'm looking for that. And I'm also now looking for their new single barrel rye. Because SLB just did a thing on it. I was like, ooh. Talk about that. I'm going to put myself on mute while I did yeah. 
Yeah, and one thing else I learned from SLB, from the uh, older, I can't remember, what's it, the older gentleman's name? I think it's Kurt, yeah. Is that his son? I don't know. I get them mixed up, but I didn't know that he had, like, sinus issues. And so what he does for, like, his sniffer glass, like, uh-huh. 20, 30 minutes before, he'll pour it, his, the sniffer, and you'll, like, roll it around, let it sit for, like, 20 minutes. So then he can get all those notes and flavors to help him out. And I was like, man. That's kind of interesting. I never even thought about that, but it makes sense. But they uh, they did a – Jack Daniels a couple years ago did a special release. It was like a single-barrel rye, and, and they, everyone's saying, like, that's one of the best ryes you can buy. And at the time, it was 65 bucks for that special rye. Uh-huh. Now you can't get it for under 500 bucks. But they're coming out this single-barrel barrel-proof rye. Yeah. So it's uh, quite up there in proof, as we know with the single barrel jack, barrel proof. And they say it, you couldn't tell really a difference if you had them blind tasting next to each other. Wow. And they said it, and they, and they also said that Jack Daniel said it's supposed to be readily available. We'll see how that is because they said that about the triple mash and the bonded. So I'm kind of curious and wanting. And we really like the triple mash. Yeah, it's really good. Not the biggest <laughs> fan of the bonded. Yeah. Triple I'm, mash was really good. I mean, I don't know. It's Jack Daniels, though. I like <laughs> anything with JD on it, I like. And yeah. I'm starting to do the same thing with anything that comes from Buffalo Trace. I haven't had anything bad from Buffalo Trace. Yeah. And so I've, I've when I got on the website to look up Eagle Rare Tasting Notes, man, they have the <laughs> antique collection. They have OFC vintages. They're, apparently, there's an experimental collection. They have Van Winkle. E.H. Taylor. George T. Stagg, which is hard to find. Yep. Sazerac Rye, which I got a couple bottles of. We're going to try. Yep. Blanton Single Barrel. Uh, Weller. Old Charter Benchmark. Ancient Age White Dog Bourbon Cream. I'll pass on that. Yep. Wheatley Vodka. Kosher Whiskey. And Freddy's Old Fashioned Soda. So, I mean, they got a lot of the stuff. It's mostly the stuff them. we can't find, too. Yes. Which is crazy to me. So, yeah. Let's talk about whiskey hunting. So... <laughs> Why do you have to do it, first of all? Because everyone's freaking doing it and taking everything up. Yep. Pretty much. Economics 101, supply and demand. Yeah. So what, what is a good point with, I was talking about uh, this to some family out there, what you got to think about is with the Seagull Rare, they barreled that 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you're going to have to kind of predict how, many, how much you're going to sell. Yeah. 10 years ago... They had no idea there was going to be a global pandemic yeah. where the world was going to shut down and alcohol sales were going to go through the roof with everybody and their mother drinking a shit ton of booze. Not only that, collecting it too. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you don't know. because, And yeah. I think that's – whiskey was popular before COVID. Yeah. But I think people sitting at home, drinking more, watching stuff on YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> people doing reviews and all this stuff, and then actually like, hmm, this is good. I want to try the other stuff. And then you learn – about what might be rarer, stuff that's aged more. Yep. And then that's when, you, you know. start getting these people that collect it and whiskey hunt for yep. certain things. Because, I mean, 10 years ago, when they bottled this, yeah, they had no idea what was going to happen. Well, that too. And, like, talking to, like, my father-in-law and other people, like, I used to be able to find this stuff on the shelf all the time, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And now it's, like, pulling teeth to find it. Yeah, you could find, you know, even not that long ago, you could find Buffalo Trace on the yeah. shelves everywhere. Yeah. You could find Weller on the shelves. Everywhere. Really ch- normal price everywhere. But, yeah. for, you know, if you only make so many and for and they start becoming popular. Yeah, everybody wants them. You got to wait 10 years until you can bottle your next batch. Yeah. So, luckily, Buffalo Trace is very big. <laughs> so, there's that. And then the whole, they had some issues with their distributor. Yeah, and things like that. Forcing them to buy certain things before they could even get a bottle of this. Yeah. Which is kind of BS, but... It's kind of like the gun industry. So there are obviously guns that are on allocation too. Yeah. That they the, the distributors will hold on to and only give to certain people. Or, in my case, like Smith Wesson just came out not too long ago with a pistol, pistol caliber carbine. So I want to get one to, for the channel and the checkout and then hopefully sell. Yeah. Well, it's on allocation, and they're only sending to select places, but they're also like, oh, hey, we see it's on your wants list. We'll sell you one, 
but then you got to buy these five other guns to go with it. Yeah. I'm like, nope, I'm good. I'll wait. Yeah, that's bull. <laughs> I hate I hate that people do that. Yeah, just it, like it, I was at that one place asking about Blanton's, and they're like, yeah, we got a bottle we'll sell you at MSRP, but you got to buy four yeah. of our private barrels or store picks yeah. for 80 bucks a pop. I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not worth it. No. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait or I'll go to Kentucky and actually go to Buffalo Trace or something. <laughs> So have you tried this on the rocks yet? Not yet. Change it a little bit. I think it. I almost think it's sweeter than oh, it was. Man, I I just can't get over the fact how good it is. Neat. Now I'm thinking I should have bought two more bottles. Oh, fuck. All of a sudden they're like debating, like, do I need it? Do I really need it? It's good. It'd be good to have on that show. I know. <laughs> That's my thing. Definitely takes any spice or burn away. Yeah. I, I man, to me, I know I mean, it's toffee and honey and everything, but to me, that all kind of tastes like caramel a little bit. Yeah, it's more caramely and oaky. I get mm -hmm. that more than anything. Man, but it's just so smooth. I know Buffalo Trace is my go-to because I can find it pretty lucky. And yeah. I like to drink it okay, quite a bit. Man, if this was just as available, even yeah, though I probably this would yeah. be a great go-to yeah. at a forty-dollar price point. Yeah. Cause it's not that much more than just regular Buffalo Trace. No, it's not. It's like what ten bucks more for. Yeah, I think that's probably a lot better in taste and flavor and smoothness. Buffalo Trace was another one that was readily available everywhere where we were in California. Yeah, even the grocery store had it for twenty five bucks. <laughs> so I, we bought a couple bottles and drank them. Yeah, it's, I mean it's so good, but. It was twenty five bucks, but then they got all these funky taxes. Like California oh, yeah, has they that charge bottle you for the bottle, mm -hmm. and if it's aluminum can, it's so much. But you can recycle it and get like ten cents back a right. can or something stupid like that. So it's like it's a CRV bottles, or something. But their like fees that. add up, but still, I mean, yeah, I, that's I forgot all about that living out there. Yep, yep. The CRV, and I'm like, what the fuck? I said it was five bucks, and it was like ten bucks. They charge you that extra tax, and then you're supposed to go recycle it. I never did. Let me tell you, I have no desire to live in California. Uh, I was ready to get the hell out of there. I don't, and I've been to Northern California. I've been all over California. I really like Northern just because yeah. it's better up there than Southern. The uh, traffic is terrible. Yeah, uh, traffic sucks. I remember I had to be at work by like, what was it, 7, and I'd leave my house at 5, 5.30. It was like a 10, 15-minute drive. Jesus. Just so I would know I would not hit traffic. And half the time, I just sleep in the car until it's time to go in. <laughs> That's screw that. Yeah, yeah. Well, getting getting around was and and people drive crazy. They'll just brake for no reason. Yeah, like you just put on your brakes. It's, Nobody's in front of you. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, and people will drive in that HOV lane super slow. Yep. It's like God. Bike splitting lanes. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I had a bike fly by me. By the time I heard him, he was like a mile ahead of me. Jeez. I was like, holy smokes. You couldn't pay me enough to lane split in California because a lot of people, we drive by, they're just on their phones not paying attention, oh, going everywhere. in and out of lanes and stuff. I'm like, dude, even if you think you have a clear path, you never know when somebody's just going to come over and not see you as well, a bike. Too California, like, I like the rules they do have. They can pull you over for texting and driving, mm -hmm. and it's like a $250 fine. Okay. I was like, man, I wish they'd start enforcing that in all the other states. Yeah. Cause I'm always tired of people looking down doing this the entire time. I'm like, you're texting. And then they're like, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. <laughs> your head's down and you're not looking forward at the road. Yeah. You're texting. They could have California. Yeah. I would prefer them to bring in and out burger here. They're talking about, I heard Missouri is trying to get in and out. They brought it to Nashville. They're on a Tennessee, list, I think. But where in Missouri? It'll probably it's been be picking up steam side. lately. So I think it's probably in the near future. If it's already in Tennessee, uh, man, eight hour drive. <laughs> we go to we go to Dallas, eight yeah. hours too, and get yeah. it there. Man, we yeah. go to Tennessee and go whiskey <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. So because because of you know these bottles, whiskey's becoming popular and popular, and everybody stuff like this that's now hard to get. You have a lot of people whiskey hunting. There's so many videos on YouTube of people just oh hey. Let's go whiskey hunting, and this is what I found this day. Yeah, there's there's one guy I watched. He's like, I went to St. Louis to whiskey hunting with this with my patrons here, and then my patrons up in Illinois. I'm like, man, you're mm -hmm. going to the extreme. 
So it, it drives me nuts. Like I get whiskey hunting to a point to, because if it's like this, something that you want to have as part of your collection. Yeah. Trying to find it is fine, but then you also kind of screw out other people too. And the people I hate that whiskey hunt are the ones that go and buy this stuff, even if they're paying double MSRP, but then we'll also try to resell that on a secondary yeah. market for even more. Yeah, that drives me nuts. And people will pay for that. And it's like, as long as people are going to triple, quadruple pay for the allocated stuff, they're going to keep doing that. And then that's going to make less and less available for those that just want a bottle or two yep. to, to drink or ha just to have in your collection. It's Yeah, it sucks. That drives me nuts. And a lot of liquor stores are trying to prevent that. But then that also hurts us who just want to go in and try a bottle for a podcast or something, yeah. you know? Because then they're like, well... We're going to have a raffle or yeah. uh, the one by us now is they scan your driver's license every time you buy something and you get a point for like every dollar you spend. And at like the end of, I don't know, if it's every month or every so many months, like six months or a quarter, right, whoever has the recorded most, you know, money that you spent at that lurker store for that period, you get the chance to then purchase. They got like several bottles of Eagle Rare up there, Blanton's and some other Jack Daniel stuff up there yeah. sitting in the shelf, but you have to spend the most money out of everybody going to that liquor store, which is kind of bullshit because that kind of pissed me off too. Cause you gotta think like whiskeys and stuff, they're sensitive to light. So like you're now having it sit on a <laughs> shelf, usually by a window. Yeah. They're not in like a dark cabinet or anything. And it kind of could ruin that whiskey too for you. So, but, but it's just the fact that yeah. like most of us aren't going to the same liquor store all the time and let alone spending thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars, you know, every couple months there. Like, yeah, I mean, I know my local liquor store, but I'm in there so much and he, he knows me now, but I was like, I go to other liquor stores too, just to see yep. like, Hey, they, if they got it good, I'll buy it. If not, then. So we've been whiskey hunting for quite a while and it's just trying to find stuff that we can't find here. Stuff like this, Blanton's, Sinatra yeah. Jack, yeah. Wellers. But we're not like selling aftermarket. We keep it to drink and yep. just to have on the on shelf, shelf as a display, <laughs> which we'll eventually get, you know, we'll have anyway. <laughs> so we'll go to liquor stores and a lot of them you have to like kind of tell them that. They're like, hey, I'm doing this for a podcast or I want to drink this. I'm not buying it to resell yeah because a lot of people at the liquor stores are like thinking that's what you're doing especially if you're just walking in and you go right up to somebody and say hey do you have this and they see you not buying anything else yeah they're like nope but then i went to a liquor store and i went to the register but i already had like three or four bottles that i was going to buy anyway and i asked i'm like hey do you have wellers and he's like no but then he saw okay you're buying four other stuff and he's like, yeah, hold on, let me go yeah. grab one from the back. And he brought me the special reserve. It was only like 20 Yeah, I bucks. usually, if I ask, I got something in my hand. Yes. Just like, oh, okay, he's not just searching. He's also buying stuff too. So that is, that is one of the tips that we have. If you are one of those people going to the liquor stores asking for something on allocation, maybe purchase something else as well that you know you're going to drink. Like even if it's like a six-pack of beer or something, just yeah. purchase something before you ask about it because you're going to be a little more lucky to get yeah. something if they do have it versus just randomly walking in there or even calling. A yeah. lot of people call liquor stores. They'll call around, and they're going to tell you no. Yeah, because I, 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 I did that one time because I saw they had Blanton supposedly, and he's like, you can't see, you can't believe everything on the internet. I've had, had Blanton's like seven months. Yeah. He's like, are you just whiskey hunting? I was like, no, I just saw it. It's one of my favorite whiskeys. I always want to have it on my shelf, and I'm like – halfway done with mine so i just wanted to i saw it and i was hoping you'd have it so i'd come there and buy that and buy some more yep that's all i tell them they're like oh okay but yeah so just yeah make sure you you're buying something if you're if yeah. you're going to ask for something on allocation and also make sure you frequent the same place and they yeah. see you buying other stuff and maybe don't ask for something every time you go in yeah but then just make sure that they see you um you know, a lot of places will have wine tastings or whiskey tastings. Go to those. Yeah. So a lot of them are free. Yeah. And so then that way they'll kind of start to recognize you, see that you're a regular. And I found out more places that 
know you or know that you frequent there will be more willing, okay, hey, hey, we got this for you. We got this yeah. in before they'll somebody just randomly walking in. Yep. There was the Gomers in Missouri that kind of told me that. He's like, yeah. no, we're not giving you anything on alloc allocation, but if you start to come in to these tastings and we start to recognize you, then you could potentially get some allocation stuff. Yeah. So another tip there. <laughs> and was, as Chris learned on Easter, don't be afraid to look around in nicks and crannies of the yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he randomly found a, we didn't know the store was doing an Easter hay gut hunt, but he found a... Yeah. Walk down, getting ready to walk out, look down. I was like, oh, they got buffalo trays. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you found it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. And just kind of keep track of the prices in your head. Yeah. Like every time I go to a liquor store, especially the bigger ones, like I'll just sit there and kind of scan what they have available and what the price is. So that way, when you do see something, you kind of know what you should pay for. That way you're not going to overpay. So yeah. you're not going to pay $150 for a bottle of Blanton's. Yeah. You know that, okay, it's usually 65, 70 bucks. Yeah. Or something that comes in and out of stock too. Like the, I don't know, like the. Like Russell's, let's say. Russell's, yeah, say that. It comes in and out of stock. So I know if I see that at like 30 some dollars, that's what it should go for. Yeah. If you go to another place and they have it, some places will be like, oh, this is allocated when it's really not. Yeah. And kind of get you because then they'll charge you a little bit more. Yep. So you kind of, kind of just keep an eye out in the back of your mind kind of keep a track of the prices on what you should yeah. pay. Cause some, some, some of the stuff will show up and then you're like, ah, I'm not going to buy it today, but you know what it's going for. Yep. Look online as well. Yeah. That, and I always, I got people looking to for me too, just yeah. in case like, Hey, you go in and you see this, let me know. Yeah. If you got friends that frequent stores and yep. that's what Alan, that's why yeah. Alan's like, Hey, you found Eagle rare, buy me a bottle. I'll pay you for it. Yeah. I'm like, okay. We're always texting each other. Hey, look what I found. Yep. Yeah, Alan will be like, hey, I was just at uh, Metcalf, and they had uh, two boxes of Buffalo Trace sitting on the floor. Yeah. All right, cool. Run up there real quick. Exactly. So, yeah, have, having several buddies that yeah, kind of scouting out helps too. <laughs> yeah, we're always doing that. Yep. But, hey, you got to. Yeah, especially for stuff that we can't find. Like, I went to that liquor store a little bit after they opened to find this Sinatra Jack just sitting there. <laughs> I would probably have been like, are you serious? Yeah. Well, I like I said in the podcast a couple podcasts ago, I was I went in there. They were just filling that case full of more allocated stuff, so I was kind of trying to not get in the way and yeah. be that guy. So I kind of glanced at it, didn't really see anything. Walked around, checked out what else they had, went back, didn't really see anything either. But then I'm like, I bent down because sometimes they'll have stuck stuff like hidden behind the other bottles and yeah. kind of hidden, and you got to really get down and look. Got down on my knees and was looking. I'm like, holy shit. There is one <laughs> box. Sinatra. I'm like, I went and found somebody as quick as possible. I'm like, I want to stake that. Like, that is mine. Yep. I uh, Can I get that? Oh, there's Buffalo Trace, too. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, he had to move a bottle of Buffalo Trace to get to that. I'm like, I'll take that, too. Yeah. I've been looking for it, and you always find it. I'm like, God uh -huh. dang. Yep. And we yeah. went through two bottles in California. Nice. <laughs> I only paid 25 bucks a pop, too. Jeez. <laughs> that's crazy yeah i and that's but the regular buffalo trace isn't something i'm going to go out of my way to hunt yeah. down but if i see it i'm going to buy it yeah because i like to drink it yeah so yeah it's the people that freaking buy the stuff buy it all up to resell it secondary mm. market i absolutely hate that that drives me nuts and most whiskey collectors do hate that too because they're not you're you're, you're taking it away from us. Yeah. And and the whole allocation thing and the whole whiskey hunt, you know, it's kind of cool because if you have a display or a bar with whiskey bottles and you find that one that you've been searching for, it's kind of cool to have on display and just have it there. Yeah. You know, the bottles look cool and then just kind of show off to your friends. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> hey, you want to come over? I, I got this Eagle Rare 10 year. Let's try wanna, it. Let's try it or yeah. whatever. So it's not like people are going in good collectors aren't going in and buying a whole bunch of stuff they're gonna go in and buy a bottle or two of it yeah. keep it on the shelf maybe one to have and then another one to actually yeah. pop open yeah jack daniels frank sinatra i saved it for a special occasion then i also did that with my jack daniels gold yep which i'm like man i can't find gold now at all so i'm like once it's gone it's gone 
that'll just be a pretty bottle sitting on my shelf. Yep. But hey, you got to enjoy it. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was real good. <laughs> There's I and I, I'm kind of catch twenty two because I like having the bottle on the shelf and looking at it, but at the same time, it's like, man, I want to try it. Yeah. And then once you open it, and it's only good for so long, especially as you drink it. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that myth. You know. You know. If it's like this, yeah. it'll last quite a while. Yeah. But then if you get down to like towards the bottom, yeah. that's a lot of air that's sitting in there, in there. At that point, though, would you want to start mixing it and making your own like infinity glass or bottle? You could do that, but SLB Drinks had a, another good tip. Put in a smaller bottle. Yeah. I did see that, and I thought that was a really good idea, too. Yeah. Like buy it. They got like a little flask they keep some mm -hmm. of their stuff in. Yeah. And, just, and they'll go in there and just write it up like on a piece of tape or something. Yeah. So they know what it is. That way you don't have all that oxygen trapped yep. in there, kind of letting it kind of spoil yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's another tip too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's whew. it's a fun, it's fun to kind of like, it's fun to have that little hunt, but also kind of sucks because you get annoyed. Yes. And, it's, it, and it can be most of the time very discouraging. Yeah, it can. It's like, well, I just wasted my time driving around the town. One thing I've noticed is like if you go into places and, and also tell them what you're looking for, they'll tell you like, hey, we get our, our Buffalo Trace yeah. um, order this week or this day or whatever. So then get all excited and you go in that day and it's like Yeah, nothing. but then they told like other people do. Yeah, and so then you're too late. Like, Fuck. But that yeah. is nice too. Some places will tell you when they get their shipments in and everything. Yeah. It's kind of like how the whole ammo, where it was hard to get ammo, uh -huh. everyone started finding out the shipment dates. Like, oh, Academy's on this day. Shields is this day. Mm -hmm. Bass Pro's on this day. Make sure you're there on those days to get your yeah. ammo. So that's another way to do it too. But yeah. more than more, nine times out of ten, you're going to kind of miss it. But yeah, maybe we'll get lucky. That's why I like working from home a lot because I could just go out and yeah. during the day when most other people are at work and stop by the liquor store. It must be nice. Yeah, it is, actually. That's how I get the <laughs> Buffalo Trace. <laughs> yeah, that's how you get a lot of this stuff. Yep. Yeah. But, but it is very rewarding when you find that bottle that you've been searching for. Yes, it is. It's like the Eagle Rare. Man, I was so excited. Like, my dad and, and all my wife was with me. I'm like, you guys have no idea, like, how awesome <laughs> this is. I know I overpaid, but... Man, I was just so excited. finding it and like, seeing it on the show. Can't wait to take a picture and send it to Chris and yeah. everybody. Like, this is kick ass. I was like, oh my god, you got to be joking. They're like, is it really that good? I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have no idea. Let me yeah. tell you, I've never had it. I was always wanting to find it to buy it, and I was like, man, mm -hmm. I was kind of jelly. <laughs> Especially when you sent me that picture of all the blends. I was like, you got to be joking. Yeah, the, all the blends I couldn't buy. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. I was yeah. like, it's almost worth it. Almost. But hopefully, you know, now that these distillers know that yeah. whiskey's popular, they're going to start planning for that. But we won't get to see that relief <laughs> for quite a while. Probably 10, 15 years. Yeah. Depending hopefully on by then we're still kicking it and drinking it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the one bad thing is you got to let that stuff age 10 plus years. Yeah. And it's, it's just time. Yeah, and a lot of the distributors will kind of focus on restaurants and stuff yeah. first before you know the little mom and pop shops will kind of be the last to get everything yeah, it drove me nuts because we were at a what was it jack stack and i saw they had blends i was like you gotta be fucking kidding me yeah can you, i just buy that bottle <laughs> i've been seeing that a lot more and more at like bars and restaurants yeah. like the stuff we can't get i'm like it's because they're they have priority over yeah. you know the other stuff and especially the places that can buy a lot in bulk. Yeah. They can do the, oh, if you buy, you got to buy this before you can get this kind of yeah. a thing. So it's just, and, and it depends on the state too. Like some states get more allocation than others. It depends on the population of the area. Yeah. I read. So it's, it kind of drives me nuts. It sucks. <laughs> There's too many people on this planet. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> make it difficult. But yeah. And also go, you know, take, go to, to the distilleries go to buffalo trace yeah. went to jack daniels and usually jack daniels has stuff that we haven't seen or was, we find out about because that's where i found my gold and my barrel proof because barrel barrel proof is hard to find single barrel yep for the longest time but you could buy it there at their little shop and i know if you go to buffalo trace they usually have buffalo trace there sometimes they have blanton stag 
you just got to see. But yeah, this I'm looking at the stack on the website. They release a different one every, every year. year. Yeah. It's like, man. Yeah, because you can go to like their gift shop and they'll say, hey, they allow so many. So LAX had the section of the, the booze that they were selling that I couldn't buy. But they had a section that they called their prestige selection. Yeah. They had a bottle of whiskey for $45,000. Oh. I'm like, who in their right mind? Who, who could drop that? It was aged 50 years. 50 years. Fuck. That's a lifetime. God. One bottle. I'm like, I'm like, are they ever going to sell That's like a like, $1,000 a year who's, almost. Who's traveling internationally that's going to come in and buy this bottle? Yeah. And God, if I'm buying that bottle, I'm cradling that the whole flight. Yeah, you better <laughs> handcuff me to that bottle. So that was the most expensive. They had several bottles that were in the 20s. They had a bottle of Stag. I forgot which one it was, but it was like thousands and thousands of dollars for a bottle of Stag. Jeez. I was like, wow. I wonder why that is. I hmm. mean, if I don't know if you think about it. I mean, something that's aged yeah, well beyond... 10, 15 10 years. years. That's that's an investment. Yeah, it is. And you don't get your return for a very long yeah. time. I mean, we haven't really had a lot of anything over 15, I think. I want to know if, if you want to start a distillery. I mean, you have to... You don't see a return on your investment for a minimum of probably four years. Four years. Yeah. That is a, <laughs> that's a lot a of money up front. That's a lot of just sitting around waiting. Well, unless you want to do crap whiskey, and then you can do a year or two years, but... Like with Jack Daniels, I mean, yeah, they're what? They roughly? sell mature, mature roughly four years. Mm -hmm. So when... And if it's the bottle and bond, they got to be like that four years for sure. Yeah, so it's... It's hard, like... What's yeah. that place down the street from us in Spring Hill? Bull Creek, which they're going out is what I heard. What? Out of business, Yeah. Don't tell me that. Gonna... I, I I heard that and I was like, you gotta be joking. There's no way because during the summertime that place is hot. Uh, well, if you don't pay taxes, all these freaking good places and they don't pay taxes yeah. and then they close and it's like, man, just pay your fucking taxes, right? Everybody's got to do it. It sucks, I know. But yeah, I heard that this weekend. Damn it! I like, oh. need to go there. Yep. They got good food. Maybe they'll sell us that bottle though. Blanton's cheap now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think cheap because then they got to pay the tax. Remember, you and me were talking about that. Like, we pay fourteen dollars for a little one ounce, and like, and they actually quoted us what twenty eight dollars for an ounce of Blanton's. And you and me are like, if we both had that, that'd be like the whole bottle right <laughs> yeah. there. We're like, nope, <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, twenty eight bucks. Get out of here. Get bent. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that's uh. Anything else about whiskey you want to talk about? Like whiskey hunting, allocation? If you want to give us some whiskey, guys, for us to try, <laughs> we'd love to try new whiskeys. We'll sponsor you on the podcast. Yeah. Give you a little segment. Yeah. Because we love whiskey, and it's good. Whiskey, guns, <laughs> where can you go, go wrong? wrong? <laughs> yeah. That was really weird. You owe me a Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh cut this one a little short, but maybe we'll go pour another glass of this stuff afterwards. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so good man wow i'm i definitely recommend if you if you see this buy it and buy drink it. it even if you're paying 80 dollars like i did buy it it's worth it i yeah. you know it it for a 10 year god it's good i know uh, I, granted i know russell's reserve is 10 years yeah, but it's nowhere near it's totally different mm -hmm. totally different this is much better yeah like yeah, <laughs> that's the smoothness. This this is so much smoother than Russell's. Yes, like I've yeah. Not that Russell's is bad. Russell's is really good. Obviously, that's yeah, like your kind of go, go to now. <laughs> but it's this is just on a whole nother level. Yeah. Like, yeah, so good. <laughs> man, I need a bigger suitcase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I thought about that. I'm like, man, I could, you know, box them up and ship them, but then you risk. Them getting Should have just ran to like TG Max or Goodwill and see if they had any suitcases for dirt cheap and just throw sh cheap shit. At, yeah, know, the for... problem where we were, because that was just on our way to where we were going. Where we were, there was like one grocery store. There was it was a 
up and Small coming hotel. place in the valley. Like it was out in the yeah. valleys and stuff like that with surrounded by mountains. And it, it's not like you just go places. Like, yeah. It was, it was you had pretty a plan rural. If you wanted to go somewhere. Yeah. Where we were, it's kind of rural and yeah. kind of spread out, but still a ton of traffic. I wonder if my buddy out there could start the lookout on for you. But the thing is, you can find it out there, but you're probably going to pay double on everything. Hmm. And that sucks. And that's where you got to consider if, is it worth it? If it's a, like a bottle you've been searching for and it's just something you want in your collection, like you want one bottle to have in your collection. Go then, for it. Yeah. You know, pay pay more for it because you never know when you're going to see that bottle again or have the opportunity to buy it. Yeah. You, you might see it again for cheaper and be like, damn, but you just don't know. Yeah. So yeah. It, <laughs> it's like how much you're going to spend on something. It, it's completely up to you. I mean, and, just being happy to see it. You'll most likely buy it and not care about price. Yeah. Unless it's like triple the price and you're like, I know this is way overpriced. Yeah. Just like, but the guy asking 150 for the Blanton's. Yeah. That's don't, don't buy that because that guy needs to just yeah. get bent and you like a hundred dollars. I might do it for that. If point. you've never seen it and you, you want one, just to have one as part yeah. of your collection. Sure. Spend a hundred bucks on it. I wouldn't pay. And if you pay 120, if you pay double, it happens. You're gonna have to yeah. pay double sometimes. Don't pay more than 120. Yeah, I would. Like if it goes start goes over double, what? No, I will not go into. Yeah, because at that point, whoever's selling that, just trying to make profit. make as much money as they can because they know how rare it is, and they know somebody will pay that price for it. Yeah, and I've seen Blanton's online for 350. Yeah, just yeah. I was like, what? And no. those are the people buying it up and screwing yeah. us all over because yeah. then it's less and less available and. If you really, really want it, then you're gonna go pay that three fifty for it. Yeah, like just don't stop buying from those people, and then they're stuck with that investment. And eventually, they're gonna have to sell it for what they had it for. Yeah, or hopefully. import for hopefully. Yeah. So f those people. Yeah. If you guys uh, let us know some tips and tricks that you've come along, or uh, if there's any bottles that have been on your radar that you finally found, and let us know what those are, and it's just a really good feeling to. Because a lot of times you just get let down and you're like, shit. And it's like, yeah. man, I'm never going to find it. But then that one time you find it, you ride that high for a while. Yep. yep. It's awesome. Awesome feeling. And then you drink the bottle and you're like, fuck. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta wait again. Yeah. So, but it's fun. Good taste in whiskeys. That's like we. That's why we like to try a different one oh, yeah. every week. And it gets expensive, but. It does, but. <laughs> It's fun to enjoy it and like make memories with it too. Yeah. So there you go. That's the best thing about it. It's a dad right there. It's yeah. Mental shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, cut this one slightly shorter than normal. May have some motorcycle news in the future. We'll talk about Ooh. that on a different podcast. There are some updates to the pistol brace ruling. I'm getting different stories everywhere. Yeah. So am I. I saw a bunch it, pop up. The, but the deadline is coming up the 31st. So either way, yeah. Fuck the ATF. Exactly. Don't comply. That's all we can say. <laughs> do not comply. Yep. Even though the ATF director said all you have to do is detach it, <laughs> that is actually not true if you read the freaking... Did you get that video I sent you this on your, on your little vacation? Yes. I, I, just you, I, have, I just didn't have a chance to yeah, respond. I sent you a bunch. I was like, oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. We were busy. And then with the two hour time difference, I'm like, oh, crap. Yep. So yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that's. I'm just glad we got to try this and oh, so am I. Do podcasts about whiskey because what's better than drinking whiskey and talking about whiskey? Nothing. Well, and guns too. Yeah, but we've been talking about that for a while. Yep, whiskey's good. Whiskey's good. Whiskey Remember, helps. drink whiskey every day that ends with Y. Yep, and it'll keep the doctor away. Eventually, we're gonna run out of diff- of whiskey to try <laughs> <laughs> if we keep this going. Then we yeah. might have to like branch out to Malt? something. Scotches. Yeah, but scotches get pricey. Yeah, they do. I don't know. There's a lot of different whiskeys out there. We got a while. We've tried a lot, though. And I brought a whole bunch back from that drive home from Florida. Yeah. And we've only had, I don't even know if we've had half of them. <laughs> Just because I keep going to the liquor store, and I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to try this. I've been yeah. wanting to try this. And I like keeping those on the shelf because it's not something that I can buy here. <laughs> and once they're gone from here, they're kind of gone. Yeah. So... Oh, like well. that Green River. That was really good. Yeah. I've actually found that here locally, though. Hmm. Yeah. So, turns out. And that's one thing is also keeping an eye out at 
what's available in your area. So that way, when you go, say, out of state, yeah, and you're looking for stuff that you can't find, but then I accidentally bought a few bottles of stuff that I didn't realize was available here. I'm like, crap. Not a big deal, but yeah. <laughs> it's like I would have rather bought something different instead of those, not realizing those are actually available here. Yeah. Like the new riff. I bought a bottle of new riff. You can find it here now. Yep. And Bell Mead, which, damn, <laughs> that stuff was not good. <laughs> that was rough. Mm-hmm. That, that is, and Blue Note. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I told my wife, I'm like, you can have those. <laughs> I don't want them. I wish my wife would get drink some of my stuff. I'm like, uh, nope. Yep. But, oh, well. Well, cool. Yeah. Let us know your favorite whiskey down in the comments below. Let us know if there's anything you want to talk about, whiskey or gun related or whatever. Yeah, let us know if you've even tried Eagle Rare. And what you think. Yeah. Or if anything, Buffalo Trace at that. Yeah. And your opinion on In-N-Out Burger. But I will fight you and say. In-N-Out's better than Whataburger. I'll oh, throw it out right there. down. My dad argues that In N Out is not as good as Five Guys. Bullshit. We had In N Out and then we had Five Guys. Then we had In N Out again. In and out. First of all, Five Guys was way more expensive. Secondly, it's not quite as fresh yeah. as In N Out. They're making the fries back there by hand. I do wish In N Out's burgers were a little bit bigger. <sighs> you can get a you can request like a four by four. What the fuck is that? Like a four patties. Oh, God, I don't want to die of a heart attack. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, there's a bunch of little hidden menus within it. But then you throw in Culver's, which Culver's is good. I, it's not better than it. I do think Culver's is good. Don't their get custard's me wrong. good. That's about it. I like I like their burgers. I like their spicy chicken sandwiches. They're good. Not in and out. But in and out, far superior. I'll take in and in out any day of the week. You just, we'll just, what's the other one um, that's popping up around here? What, Freddy's? No. What a burger? Yeah, what a burger. It's popping up all over the place here because of Pat Mahomes. It's garbage. It's terrible. Like their fries are okay. I mean, like, the only thing that I like about what a burger is their breakfast. I haven't had that. Their breakfast is pretty good. But their burgers are garbage. Yeah, they're all right. They're big. That's all. That's the only big thing about them. They're big ass burgers. You can have it. I'd give me have, in and out. Yeah, I'd I'd take it in and out <laughs> any day of the week. Yes. Plus, it's cool because that classic kind of fifty style restaurant. That yeah. I don't know. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. But anyway, Chris, what do you got to say? Remember, this is a YouTube podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and tickle that bell. If you're listening on any other platforms such as Amazon, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or all those other listening platforms, remember to follow us. And with that, everyone, have a good one.